Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. We are um, sort of in the last legs of this course, and we are close to the end of week number eleven. And uh, we sort of uh, hope that uh, whatever we have you've learned uh, in this course will help you to design algorithms for systems such as what you see in the background. Um, so what we were doing uh, until this uh, last time was talk about, start to discuss a double integrator problem using the initial excitation method. Um, now this method uh, helps us to avoid the need for uh, persistent excitation in parameter learning. Now remember that learning is one of the key um, sort of uh, paradigms or requirements in neural network um, based adaptive controllers. Some uh, what you see in this uh, you know in this picture also yes. So other systems uh, that you see here like drones and aircraft and spacecrafts are uh, uh, real applications of adaptive control and have in fact been tried um, at a, a large scale research level and at some uh, implementation level also. Now, um, in this uh, double integrator type system, what we sort of emphasized or we were starting to emphasize is that uh, the construction of your adaptive law does not get impacted significantly. And the reason for this is that this regressor parameter structure that we use um, in order to design our update law is agnostic to the dynamics of the system. So it doesn't matter what's the order. It doesn't matter what kind of dynamical system. It's as long as you can write uh, the system in a regressor parameter form that is y theta equal to u, if you can do that, then you can uh, sort of design your adaptive controller for any system. In fact, even if there were nonlinearities here, these nonlinearities would just get inside the y equation. All right. And that's it. It will not really affect how you design your adaptive update law. And so, of course, we design these two layer filters, yeah, yf, uf, and yif, uif. And the structures are uh, kept in such a way that the regressor parameter equation structure same remains identical yeah, for the first layer and the second layer filter also. Yeah, and so this is a rather important feature, uh, which is what helps in the subsequent analysis. And you've already seen uh, this kind of analysis for the single integrator system. So the adaptive law is, of course, chosen again in the standard way. With this, and you get theta tilde dot is nice, uh, you know, non positive terms. That is, you have minus mu f y f transpose y f theta tilde and minus mu i f y f theta tilde. So we know for sure, for a fact, that yif is of course positive semi-definite. So is yf transpose yf. But you also know that in the presence of initial excitation, yif is positive definite. And so therefore, this becomes a legitimate negative term. Yeah. Um, so what we are not doing at this stage is that we have not introduced the certainty equivalence uh, adaptive law here. Yeah, yet. But I mean, we can talk about that, but again, because you've seen it for the single integrator, it should be possible for you to implement also in the double integrator. Yeah, so we'll look at that later as the need arises. Yeah, but for now, we are just looking at the standard initial excitation based adaptive law. Yeah. So, um, so we construct the error dynamics, of course, using uh, E1 and E2. And the dynamics turns out to be E1 dot is E2 and e2 dot is z theta plus u minus r double dot. All right, great. So now we, now we start our standard backstepping design, right? How do we do it? We look at the first subsystem. Uh, I'm sorry, let me mark the lecture first. 
so we are on to lecture 11.5 right okay, we are on lecture 11.5 so how do we do the backstepping design we start by looking at the first subsystem and assume that e2 is our controller if e2 was the control then uh, what is the good control to drive e1 to 0 simply minus k1 e1 or some positive gain k1 all right so that would be your desired value of e2 right now it's evident to us that uh, e2 cannot just be made to follow a desired value or cannot just be equal to a desired value yeah but we can make it track the desired value and that's how we define the backstepping error which is e2 bar which is e2 minus e2 desired and that becomes e2 plus k1 e1 here in this case and again we have seen this backstepping design even before so this should not be something new for you just a couple of weeks old this material so uh, i mean i hope that uh, this is not coming to you as any kind of surprise if it is then i would strongly encourage you to go back and look at our backstepping design lectures yeah so uh, so a new system is essentially going to be written in terms of e1 and e2 bar where e1 is of course your usual error variable and e2 bar is the backstepping error variable so of course what we try to do is drive e1 and e2 to zero right so our aim will now be sorry to drive e1 and e2 bar to zero right and remember that if e2 bar goes to zero implies e2 goes to zero yeah why because even if you look at e2 bar and if e2 bar is going to zero k1 even is already going to zero by the previous fact that e1 is going to zero so we are left with the fact that e2 is also going to zero okay so this was already established so uh, making the backstepping error variable go to zero is equivalent to actually making the original variable also track zero yeah so this is what we want great so this is what is the backstepping design right now uh, we of course want to do the analysis so we uh, do the control design using the lyapunov function the candidate lyapunov function in this case because it's not evident uh, without doing this analysis as to what the control should be. okay so we as usual choose our uh, this is how backstepping works the first piece of the lyapunov candidate is e1 squared by 2 from the first piece of the dynamics right and the second term is just the quadratic in the backstepping error and the third term now is our usual initial excitation based uh, sort of term so there we introduce the lambda and then there's a theta tilde norm squared so remember that e1 and e2 are scalars but theta tilde has e terms right so it's a vector r3 vector in r3 yeah so therefore it is there is a norm here right so now we of course uh you know expand this i get e1 e1 dot right and e1 dot is just e2 which i'm writing in terms of the new variables e2 is just e2 bar minus k1 e1 right and then e2 bar e2 bar dot is just e2 dot right plus k1 e1 dot is this one okay and then of course i'm left with this nice set of terms from my parameter update here. all right great now what uh, i have this nice negative term from in e1 which i keep then i have this term in e1 e2 bar which i club with this guy that's what i do write the nice term club this guy in here so i get z theta plus u minus r double dot plus k1 e2 as before and then i get this additional term e1 yeah, so this term is of course coming from here yeah and these terms are of course same as before not made any change here except for writing this term as the norm squared term all right that's it that's the only difference now what would be the logical value of the control as always try to cancel 
all the funny looking terms and introduce a good term. This is the basic logic. So what are the funny terms? I can't completely cancel this. So I introduce an update, uh, a parameter estimate here. Yeah, so I try to cancel it with my estimate. I can cancel this, so I do. I can cancel these two, so I do. And then I introduce a nice negative term with a positive gain K2. Yeah, and once I do this here, I get V dot as minus K1 E1 squared minus k2 e2 bar squared and since i could not completely cancel this term i'm left with this theta tilde w all right okay i hope that is sort of evident all right uh, now uh, we of course have this two nice terms here which is what we try to use to dominate so what we do is uh, we start to uh, use a usual uh, sum of squares method to split this into two pieces this is getting split into this guy and this guy right using a b is less than or equal to a squared plus b squared by 2 yeah and uh, now it's evident that this can be combined with, yeah, with this term i do that and this term can be combined with this term Right. So now notice that as usual, when I came from here to here, I ignored this. I removed this term yeah, because this is not definite. It's at most negative, semi-definite. Yeah, and so it's not very clear if I can use it to dominate a term. So therefore, it's not really useful for me in the Lyapunov analysis. The important thing to remember is that it does not harm my analysis. Therefore, I can drop this term. And so this is. Because I dropped a negative semi-definite term, I'm guaranteed that this is less than or equal to this term after dropping. Okay. All right. Great. So, uh, if I now look at what's left with me, uh, I know that this term gets combined with this guy to give me that. And this term gets combined with this guy to give me that. Okay. Now, as usual, there is this question of choosing lambda. So remember that this mu if and mu f and all these things are usually fixed beforehand. Right? At this stage, I'm only left with the ability to choose lambda. Sigma 1 i is also sort of, um, you know, is, is sort of chosen. Right? So I will say that, let's see, I, I can go from here to here if y f is initially excited. Yeah, remember, I cannot go from because I re replace yif by the sigma one identity, and I can do this only if yf was initially exciting. Yeah, so this is where I've used the assumption on initial excitation again, similar to before. Yeah, and now because this z is a function of the state, also the, we can choose, but it's okay it's complicated right it's not completely straightforward to say that this is the particular value of lambda that will work but the important thing for us is the existence of such a large lambda yeah i just have to choose lambda large enough and if i do choose lambda large enough i'm fine and uh, most importantly uh, i get these nice negative terms here and of course uh, in the presence of initial excitation, I can show convergence of E1, E2 bar, and theta tilde. All right. Okay. So in the presence of initial excitation, everything is great. Yeah. Everything is great. No problem. Right Just like before, I have convergence of all three parameters. I only require initial excitation and not persistent excitation. So my performance is really nice. Yeah. I can dominate this term with a large lambda, a lambda which is not going into my control implementation so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter to me now the issue uh, that we are left with bef as before is that what happens if you don't even have initial x okay so we are still left with that same question okay and in order to answer that question i would again go back and try to modify my adaptive law right so what i would do is i would add here another term lambda 
theta tilde dot uh, sorry there will be a negative sign here minus lambda theta tilde dot v right and this is assuming that theta tilde dot is minus uh, mu f y f transpose y f theta tilde minus mu i f y i f theta tilde minus v okay so this is what we assume right? so this is actually i'm sorry this is theta tilde transpose v okay, so this is what we have as an additional term if i think of introducing another additional term in the parameter update law okay so why am i trying to do this because we already saw that everything is nice if uh, there is initial excitation but if there is no initial excitation both these terms are gone i cannot really use them to dominate anything but then i still have this mixed term which i don't know if i can dominate in the absence of excitation because these two terms are gone so then the only solution i would have is to somehow try to get rid of this term right and that's what we are trying to do okay so if there is excitation everything was nice excellent result but in the absence of excitation we want to make a modification to the adaptive law so that i don't have to deal with this mixed term which i cannot cancel or which i cannot dominate anymore okay right so then i propose this sort of a additional term and i try to see what this additional term will be the additional term has to come from the lyapunov analysis so this term remains as it is here yeah this term remains as it is and here too this term remains as it is yeah now at this stage if you notice i can choose i said this stage i can look at these two terms together right? because this term is if i take a transpose it's theta tilde transpose z transpose e2 bar okay yeah. e2 bar is irrelevant because it's a scalar so i can move it around wherever but i do have to take a transpose of instance so this theta tilde transpose and this theta tilde transpose is sort of matching so if i choose if we choose your v to be uh mm -hmm. let's see z z transpose so this is capital z so i'm going to be careful here z transpose e2 bar divided by lambda okay if i do that then this term and this term cancels out so this term does not exist all right i hope this makes sense okay. essentially i am able to choose a v says that i can cancel these two terms and once i cancel these two terms i have no more mixed terms so this term is not there this is also missing so my e dot after this point right beyond this point my v dot becomes different right so my v dot with this new adaptive law becomes minus a1 e1 square minus a2 e2 bar squared minus lambda mu f yf transpose theta tilde squared minus lambda mu if theta tilde transpose yif theta tilde all right so there is no more mixed term here yeah so this is already less than equal to zero so if there is no excitation then i can ignore these terms or i can still prove that 
yif theta tilde and yf transpose theta tilde are going to go to zero. And you can all you will also be able to prove that e1 e2 bar goes to zero. So e1 e2 bar goes to zero. E1 in absence of initial excitation plus theta tilde e1 e2 bar remain bounded. Yeah. So all these quantities also remain bounded. So this is rather nice. Right? So if I make a small change, so my adaptive law, as you can see, uh, becomes this, right? So if I write it out here, uh, so theta tilde dot is minus mu f y f transpose y f tilde minus mu i f y i f theta tilde and then minus one over lambda z transpose e2 bar yeah so if you see this is like the certainty equivalence adaptive law and this is the usual initial excitation that if I make this modification with this additional term here, then I do get a nice performance even in the absence of initial excitation. All right. So great. So basically, you have now seen that it is uh, very much possible to do this adaptive control design with this initial excitation for double integrators also. In fact, I would strongly encourage you to try it for the unmatched case and so on and so forth to see that uh, this is in fact applicable to a large variety of dynamical systems. Yeah. Uh, of course, you would also see the certainty equivalence modification and so on and so forth. And but I would encourage you to do that. So if you do have initial excitation, which is a significantly weaker requirement, you are in very good shape. Yeah. You can actually deal with many many uh, different dynamical systems and your update law generation is decoupled from sort of the dynamics i mean it is hidden it's not like it's decoupled in the sense it, it's not independent of the dynamics it depends on the dynamics through the regressor and the filtered regressor and filtered control and so on but the fact is you are still uh, you know you're not uh, seeing it in the expressions okay? and that's rather nice in terms of the construction the construction has a standard structure just your regressor keeps changing so you can pretty much use the same update law and plug it into a different system just by modifying the regressor and this is of course very useful in implementations all right excellent so what have we sort of seen in this week is that we started with this uh, idea of um, initial excitation based adaptive control we understood that the persistence of excitation is a very stringent requirement. We have, of course, seen how persistence excitation is used to prove parameter learning. Uh, and now uh, we wanted to do something better. So therefore, we looked at initial excitation-based adaptive controller. Uh, the idea was relatively nice, simple, straightforward in that you write your system in a regressor parameter form. That's the first thing. And then you start to design two level of filters with zero, with zero initial conditions. And once you do that, you have this standard regressor parameter form in the filtered variables also. And because of this, you can construct a very straightforward parameter update law. Uh, with this, you then go on to design your controller like you would do. Uh, and your parameter update law is, of course, already designed. Um, we also talked about uh, the parameter dependent version of initial excitation, just like we have for persistent excitation, because more often than not, your regressor has to depend on the state, which means it depends on the solutions and which means it depends on the initial conditions, which are effectively going to function like parameters. Therefore, you uh, do require to define parameter 
dependent uh, notions of initial excitation also um but then once you do that the proof goes on you know proof of convergence and all is significantly simpler in this case because you even in the lyapunov analysis directly you start to see negative terms if you have initial excitation or parameter dependent initial excitation right so things are significantly nicer in terms of the proof so you don't need uh, more complicated results like the integration integral lemma like that you did require in the parameter dependent version of persistent excitation um we then of course realized that uh, a couple of things one is that choosing lambda is not easy right which is this lambda uh, which has which is used to dominate these mixed terms and we also saw that uh, if there is no initial excitation either so if you don't even satisfy this weak requirement then things may not work very well for this kind of adaptive controller so what we saw was that a simple modification of this adaptive controller where we add the original c adaptive law to this update also helps alleviate this issue that is one you don't need to choose a lambda anymore because there is no mixed terms so there is nothing to dominate so there's no need to choose a lambda and two in the absence of excitation also you get bounded uh, trajectories and convergence of tracking error to see, which is what most adaptive control theorists promise in any case all right so so you don't go back on that you know fundamental promise of adaptive controllers and on top of that you add this cool feature of uh, having you know only of requiring only excitation at initial time and not requiring anything uh, for infinite time like you do when you talk about persistent excitation all right so i hope you found this new method rather interesting and impressive if you have already designed some adaptive laws for your dynamical systems i would recommend that you do the same with this initial excitation based method and i would also recommend that you compare the performance yeah uh, so that would be interesting uh, for you to report and for me to see and so do let me know if you do see any difference a one word another um so in the subsequent week we are uh, going to focus a little bit on a neural network adaptive control so learning ideas and how we can do some provable uh, sort of results in learning so we will essentially follow uh, pretty much an article uh, from frank lewis in the subsequent week in order to get a feel for Yeah, uh, how adaptive control and learning are intrinsically connected. Yeah, so I really hope you will join me in the last week, which is sort of an excursion into more modern areas. Of course, the paper is not very modern, but because computations etc. have become significantly cheaper now, uh, learning and uh, deep learning has become a more popular tool for many systems engineers. Yeah, so we will uh, look at some of that. in this upcoming final week of our npt yeah except so i hope uh, you all enjoyed these sessions and i hope to see you again in the next week thank you